One of the striking things about Gingrich uh, prior to now, prior to the last two years or so, is how long he was accepted uh, among, say, the Sunday morning shows uh, as a Republican in good standing who had important things to share with the nation about the way he saw uh, governing in America. That's right. He's always had a knack for presenting himself as a very high-minded idealist, but really the, the main reason that he was able to take control of the Republican Party in the 1990s is that he went to the Republicans and said, you guys are too nice. Um, you've got to get rough. You've got to get tough. You've got to you've got to be as vicious as the as the Democrats are, um, and, we, and you've got to destroy them. And we've got to practice politics in a completely different way. Um, that was how he toppled the Republican leadership in 1990, and that was the spirit he brought to the quote unquote Republican Revolution in, 19, in the 1990s. And, and the way that they fought against the Clinton administration really reflected this, this spirit. They really saw Bill Clinton as being totally illegitimate. Um, they would shut down the government and they would impeach him because they didn't think he had any right to stand in the way of their policies, in spite of the fact that he had been elected president of the United States. Uh, so I think— you know, if you want to go back and look at the Republican Party's historical evolution into its current phase, where Donald Trump is the leader of the party, Gingrich really is an important figure to study. So that's what I tried to do. Yeah, and, and his his rhetoric was a version of Trump's before Trump, uh, yeah. and his recklessness, his lying accusations uh, when he was a junior member of the House, going to the House floor at night when the C-SPAN camera was on to accuse Democrats of being sympathetic sympathizers with communism. Uh, Tip O'Neill then ordered uh, the C-SPAN camera to pan the House to show that Gingrich was speaking to an empty chamber, but because of C-SPAN, he was speaking to people out there who were beginning to form what is now the Trump cult. Yeah, and I think he was also a pioneer in understanding that they wanted to go around the mainstream media and speak mm -hmm. um, through conservative media that, that that would simply amplify their claims and wouldn't subject them to any kind of traditional journalistic scrutiny. So um, in the 90s, that medium was talk radio. Um, Fox News wasn't invented until 1996, but that eventually su supplanted it. But, but he really— um, was a bridge figure to Trump, and he was an important figure in getting the party to embrace Trump. Of course, when Trump first ran for president in 2016, um, most Republican elites um, were disgusted by him and, and, and said we would never accept him. And, and, and Gingrich was one of the first people to say, no, he's really got something to say. We should listen to this guy. Um, so he, he really saw which way the party was going and, and got ahead of it. 